The hypocrites seek to deceive Allah, but it is He who deceives them. And when they stand for a salah, they stand in laziness and to be seen by men. And they do not remember Allah, except for a little. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Welcome back to Nafisa's Pearls. Thank you for joining me today. When I saw this verse of the Quran, it really affected me because I felt that I was starting to get into a routine where in my mind I felt that I had a time frame within which I could praise Allah. So even if I wasn't doing anything, I would still not haste towards my Salah. And I decided to do more research to remind myself because I know back in the days when I always thought of the punishments of delaying Salah or not even praying Salah at all, God forbid, Alhamdulillah, I do still pray, um, it always kept me in check. So I felt I was going back into this ideal of just praying my Salah within the time frame and not rushing towards it as soon as the call for Salah comes. So in my research, I found some information that I would like to share with you. But before I do so, let me explain further the characteristics of a hypocrite Muslim, although they pray. As it states in that verse of the Quran, is that when they stand to pray, they stand in laziness. And how many times have we done that? We have stood so many times in laziness because we have delayed our salah to a point where by the time we come to pray, we are so tired that our salah is just mere actions. It has no meanings, we don't concentrate on anything that we're saying, we just do the rituals and the actions and we think that that is it, that it will be accepted. This verse of the Quran is a major wake up call for all, all of us to realize that every single time we perform salah, we need to be focused, we need to be concentrating in order for our salah to be accepted. Because another thing that some of us may or may not know is that the reward of salah is given in different rankings depending on your khushu, your concentration in your salah. Now many things can help our concentration in our salah. One of the major things is understanding what we are saying. A lot of us recite Surah Al-Fatiha so many times but if we were to think to ourselves let me say to myself or repeat to myself what Surah Al-Fatiha means word for word how many of us would really be able to do that? So understanding what you're saying really helps your concentration. Another thing that would help with concentration in Salah is knowing that you are standing before the kings of all kings. So I have to humble myself. It is an honor. When the Adhan goes on, it said, Hayyan al-Salah, come forward to Salah. Hayyan al-Falah, come to success. And we sit there and we say that we are Muslims, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us because we have all done it at some point. Going back to the verse of the Quran. So the first is that they stand in laziness and the second is that they pray to be seen by men. Meaning the reason why a lot of us pray sometimes is to show off. We're not praying to please Allah because when we stand to pray and there's people around us now we want to put on our best of recitation voices that we don't do on a regular basis. If no one was there with you, would you still use that beautiful voice to recite the Quran? Let's think about it. And why not? Because Allah sees us no matter what we do. And when we come before him, we need to present ourselves in the best way possible. So let us try in as much as we can to make sure that we concentrate when we are, when we are um, performing our prayers and not to perform our prayers to please other people. Because on the day of judgment, when we meet Allah and we expect for Allah to give us the reward of our prayers, it would be said back to us that you've received your reward in the hereafter. Your reward was pleasing those people whom you aimed to please. You didn't do it for the sake of Allah. So you end up with nothing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from that. Ameen. The third point which could make a Muslim who prays a hypocrite is that they do not remember Allah except for a little. 
How many of us get so carried away with our daily lives? We forget Allah. We don't remember Allah. We pray because we feel somehow we have to pray. But other than praying and maybe fasting in the month of Ramadan, what else do we really do for the sake of Allah? It's time for us to stop and to reflect and to think of our purpose here in this life. Our purpose and our goal is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we really want to be granted Jannah to free those, we would work for Jannah to free those. You see, Jannah comes at a price. The price is immense effort. Our effort is never going to be enough though to grant us Jannah to free those because we can only be granted Jannah to free those if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of his mercy grants us that. Our deeds can never reach the point where we deserve Jannah to free those. However, Allah will look at our efforts and our intentions behind it. So I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps us to come closer to him and to guide us towards him and not to let the shaitan deceive us because salah and concentration is salah is such a big problem that we're having these days so to recap the three main characteristics that could make a praying muslim a muslim of course we should pray a muslim a hypocrite is number one when they stand for salah they they are lazy and they do not concentrate in their salah number two when they pray they pray to show off. They're not praying to please Allah, they're praying to show off to all the people around them. And number three is that they do not remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, now that we have discovered that these are the things that could make us hypocrites and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from such a bad disease of the heart, Ameen, say Ameen. What we can do is try to make sure that we pray Salah as soon as it enters. When we think about what the call of the Adhan is saying, it's telling us to come to success. And Allah says that indeed, those who offer their Salah, they are the ones who are successful. Okay? And offering the Salah is of course offering it in the way that is best and pleasing to Allah. That is what will make us successful. So let us try and offer our Salahs when we should, as soon as it comes in, as much as possible. Number two, let us try and learn to understand Arabic or understand the things that we are saying in Salah. At least get a general gist of what you're saying when you're praying. And number three, let's make more efforts to remember Allah. It could be through reading, it could be through watching videos, it could be any form of anything that rem reminds you of Allah. There are so many different ways that you could do that these days. Please utilize it and remember Allah in all that you do. Because in the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our goal. Jazakallah khair for watching. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. And please don't forget to thumbs up this video and subscribe for more videos and reminders like this. Assalamu alaikum.